Good day, guys. Got a couple of jobs in on old SD2000 detectors. And these are being upgraded to be turned into specifically very deep gold detectors. Um, it'll also do very, very well on small gold, but uh, these are to be um, modified to be very, very low frequency detectors, um, very long pulses, going to be a lot of upgrading because when you start uh, trying to put uh, very long pulses into the coil, which is very low impedances, uh, the driving component start getting hot. So you got to take care of that. Now, the SD2000 uh, is not a bad detector. Um, it, it can be greatly enhanced and uh, fixed up, made more quiet. But, you know, it's like how much do you want to spend on these things? I mean, the worst thing about it, well, it's not the worst thing, well, for the time, it, you had to have this, but now you, you don't. But uh, if you have a look on the oscilloscope there, um, you can see the centre line. That's our signal line um, coming in from the coil after it's been uh, switched and so forth to get rid of the uh, transmit voltage and the back EMF voltage. But if you have a look at that um, scale there, that's on 200 millivolts per vertical division. I don't know if you can see the divisions, but you know, normally if you had that on a um, GP or a GPX type detector, that middle line would be as, at that resolution would be as fine as a human hair. But uh, if we take this in, okay, if you can see, I'll make it a bit uh, wider again. If you can see the center line there, um, it looks like, you know, a row of porcupines. And these lines here, these spiky lines, that is internally generated from the power supply that's supplying the positive 5 volt uh, rail to power the electronics. I think I've made mention in a previous video that these detectors um, utilize um, its 5 volt rail from the battery as ground and the negative of the battery is minus 5 volts or 6 volts however you, you look at it. Um, it has got a small regulating transistor inside that does uh, convert the battery voltage into um, negative uh, 5 volts for the low level electronics, not the high level stuff. And it has a little switch mode. Well, inside the detector there, there it is on the bench. It has a switch mode um, oscillator uh, inside the detector. I can't really show you on that on that board because i'll have to go and uh rip this off the tripod have i got another board yes i have here i've got one here that um it got sent in a long time ago don't know if you can see up in this corner here it actually caught on fire and burnt all the components off so yeah um if you look at these detectors Let's make sure I've got the, it's definitely um, the right one. Yeah, this is um, an old SD that was uh, upgraded by um, Barry Johnson. Um, God rest Barry's soul. Barry was a good guy, actually. I like Barry. I've known him, or knew him for years and years and years. And uh, 
His uh, son actually makes the nugget finder coils. That's Rowan. So yeah, there you go. This one was modified by Barry Johnson. It's a very old phone number there. When he um, lived in uh, Wedderburn. It had uh, four positions. And they just selected different frequencies. Which I think all that has been removed. Or... Oh no, look here, there's a big blob of stuff here. Um, it's got an audio amplifier in there, it's got a transformer coupled audio amplifier to get the hum out of the signal. And uh, it has a, a crystal, uh, it goes onto here, the existing crystals, I think 1.8 and 2 megahertz. And uh, multi position switch. To select um, what you wanted. <laughs> I think there's a couple of different designs of these detectors because I'm just looking at this one. It's a little bit different than the one I've got on the bench. Let's have a quick look see. One, two, three, diode. It's interesting. If you have a look at this, this, this doesn't make much sense to me, but. Uh, On these uh, detectors, that device there is a 100 microhenry inductor. I don't think that's a 100 microhenry inductor. Um, it, it could be, but uh, it's very small. And uh, normally next to that, there's a um, high-speed diode. And there is a 1 millihenry inductor here, which is a ground isolation inductor. But that is different. It's a little bit different in the design. I'll see if I've got another one somewhere. I'll have a look. Because normally, um, oh, I'm not going to pick that one up. Oh, I have, of course. I've got the other one here that um, has to be... Uh, at the um, upgraded as well. So let's have a look in this one. Yeah, okay. I'll point this one out. Have a look here. Same detector, but if you see here, that's the inductor. And if you have a look at the size of that, it's fairly substantial. That should be able to do about 100 milliamps or so of current. Maybe a bit more. I wouldn't push it much past that but it only has to supply power to all the low level componentry just all the um, uh, chips here so you know they're not going to draw that much some of these maybe draw about you know th three three to five milliamps each or something it doesn't add up to much so that's basically it and in here it's already been um it's had a low, low frequency put into it at one stage. Uh, I think I might have done that years and years ago for the fellow. That's a um, one megahertz crystal that uh, basically uh, sets it up to run very long pulses. But on these ones, it's already had a little bit of uh, work done to it already. Um, the LM394 has been removed here. And uh, there is going to be a, um, a multiple op-amp low noise board fitted in here. The LM394s are fairly low noise. They are, um, we can't get them anymore, though I think they stopped production. Um, but I have got some metal can ones around still, which are military spec, and they're, you don't want to buy them. I think they're about 80 bucks each or something. But... Uh, you're going to wire a new um, front end in here. I'm going to try and get rid of the noise out of this uh, power supply, the switching power supply. As you can see, it consists of a, um, there's an NPN transistor there. These are um, low saturation type transistors. There's another one here. And for memory, I think there's a, uh, I always get the 2021 and 22s muddled up on the power supply. 
I don't usually work on them. I usually work on other parts of the detectors, but yeah, I think there's uh yeah, there's the um we had to put this uh filter in here. This is this is a, probably an afterthought. A resistor in series with a capacitor. It probably you had the power supply putting out too much spurious and um <clears throat> doing some uh, nasties to the receiver but yeah so that's another one i've got to do this one at the moment is um humming away quite nicely if you can hear it i'll just turn it up but i have got it on the uh, little cancel coil up there somewhere up there it's on that and at the moment if i use um 0.1 gram well, that's, that's not too bad actually that's just changing the front end it's not giving a good um, representation because the camera is too low so I'll, I'll see if I can wind him up I'll wind up the camera I'm going to remember last time I did this um, the whole thing leaf fell down had a great run off so I'm probably I'll get up a little bit more and listen to that the detector starting to pick up the camera I can hear it as I was getting close it was starting to picking up the um, whatever's oscillating away in the camera it's time base or whatever it is but anyway there's this thing point one we've got a bit of uh, hot melt glue and stuff stuck to this I'm gonna clean my stick up it's been through the wars with hot melt glue on it but anyway so there you go um the old sd you know we get a lot more grunt out of it than that by the way we'll try that one 0 0.05 i doubt it'll pick it up you know it's this this detector is 1994 1995 it's pretty old so. oh if you can hear that it's actually picking up the 0 0.05 but um i could bring this back down the thing we've got to get rid of or try and reduce as much as possible is that porcupine um, that I think the oscillator in here for the switch mode runs at 64 kilohertz so each one of those lines is uh, a spacing of 64 kilohertz and it's just a um, messing up the uh, you know the signal recovery so it just goes to show if you clean these up um, you can get a really good detector out of it like these things are fantastic on um, really big deep gold when you're on a really big coil they do work really really well um, and they've got some distinct um, um, tone advantages the audio is not processed and if you um, practice a lot you can actually uh, tell what is a very shallow target uh, and what is a big deep target it sort of because um, it brings in there's, there's two separate audio lines on two separate receive channels and one's for the small pulses and one's for the uh, big long pulse for the what they call the ground balance channel but the whole thing's ground balance it, it samples on both channels but um, when you get um, a target reacting with the long pulse because it's getting more energy it uh, it automatically switches into that channel inside the detector it's just got a, um, um, a level uh, detect switch type thing you never hear both channels at the same time you only hear one so when it activates uh, channel two in the receive um, it gives an inverted response so instead of your your audio starting off and going higher what you usually get 
for a small target, it, it'll sort of make a, you know, a downward sound and come up again. And I, that's what I discovered. I um, was using a 30-inch coil. This is going back years and years ago. Um, out at uh, Creswick. And I got this uh, signal I've never heard before. And I'll just turn the audio down. That's a bit annoying. Um, I got a uh, signal I've never heard before. Uh, and it was like an inverted signal. And I was working in pipe clay at the time, or detecting pipe clay near the road, near um, uh, Old Melbourne Road. And, you know, I, I'm going along, there wasn't, there wasn't much there, just some surface junk and stuff. Um, and then I got this signal that sort of went a down dipping tone, and came back up, and I said, that's weird. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that's going to be junk, because um, it's right next to the road. Oh, probably about two metres off the road. And I was just curious. So I started digging. And because it was all that flowery pipe clay, it was really easy. I get down probably close on about a metre or so. And, uh, yeah, that rock feels heavy. And it wasn't a rock. I um, well, I think it's just, just over 20 ounces. So with, with um, anything else, it w I probably would not have heard it. No, I, I would have just walked away. And uh, I should have done that area extensively, uh, but I haven't. <laughs> I did find a lot of small gold there. I um, uh, found a patch of um, like uh, reef break material, and this is going. This is going back um, nineteen ninety two, three, four, somewhere around there. Uh, and I was using high frequency VLF detectors, and I had a um, a White's Gold Master, uh, one of the real early ones, tin box one, and a uh, very small coil. And I kept finding all this tiny gold. And yeah, collected it all up and uh, had, a, had a bottle. And I, I think um, for a whole bottle, which should have been looked like it was about maybe three ounces, I think it was only half an ounce in weight. It was all aerated, it was all spiky. Uh, but that was good. That um, went to one of the local. Um, um, businesses there, they used it to put on stat little tiny statues or like little tourist things. I think they sold at Sovereign Hill and the little spiky gold in the in the dish or in the miner's hand on those tiny little uh, statue things. You know, well, they probably only six inches tall or something. Yeah, so anyway, digressing. So this is um, all the noise we're going to uh, put up with on this system and uh, I've got to get uh, rid of it this you know it hasn't even got um, the uh, um, damping resistor switched out of circuit when you go into receive on this so might have to look at that might have to see if I can I don't know I'll give it a go I'll see if I can put a switched um, high voltage MOSFET in there to dampen it and then um, open circuit it uh, back in the receive uh, mode. Uh, it, it can be done, but I don't know if I've got enough real estate on the board in there to actually do that. You know, there's, you know, there's, um, you know, it's pretty jammed up with stuff now. I'm going to put more stuff in it too. So this is going to have low noise front end and it's going to have variable gain. And it's going to have low frequency. <clears throat> yeah, but you have a look at this, like, We'll put this down to normal levels where you've been looking at uh, any of the other detectors and that um, noise there is uh, really substantial. At the moment, it's on um, 10 millivolts per division and with a very, very low noise um, input stage on the detect on the newer detectors all that fat business you're looking at all that uh, um, in the middle of it there that would be down to somewhere between two to five uh, millivolts in height so you know one one fifth of that 
division from there to there, one fifth of that. Look at it. This is the noise envelope. Well, you've got the uh, power supply for a start, and that's that's off the chart. So you got that during the rec this is the uh, receive times, by the way. Here, that's um, the small pulses, and that's the big long pulse um, for the receive. And poor old detectors getting all that uh, um, interference coming in as well, and uh, that would be causing all sorts of uh, signal swamping. Um, very very. Unfortunate, we're going to try and cure it. Um, trying to shut the power supply up so it doesn't radiate into the detector and, and get into the circuitry. That That is um, the main thing to do. Can't have that. And yeah, um, also got to be, beef up um, um, the flyback feedback clamping circuit and uh, transmit stage and also um, the blocking diodes. Also, some other component changes have to happen as well to get down to um, below one megahertz time base, or else it'll trip the detector out, it'll stop working. Uh, and uh, also then we, for the low frequency, we have to um, readjust. If you can see, where are we? Oops, too far. I don't know if you can see here. There's uh, three potentiometers here. They need to be adjusted to get rid of the earth fields. Nothing worse than swinging the coil. And it's going, whoa, whoa, with um, the coil moving into the earth's magnetic field back and forth. So we can adjust all those to get that out, set it up for low frequency. Um, what I have noticed... Even um, doing low frequency work, even um, going back to you know onto the high frequency crystals to look for smaller gold, um, there's not much uh, impact from the earth field being misadjusted uh, for those higher frequencies than uh, when you do it for the low frequencies. The other way around makes a big difference, and uh, it um, makes the lower frequencies noisy. It makes it very you know. You don't want a rising threshold and um, tone type thing when you're swinging the coil. You'll just miss gold. So we've got to adjust it so that doesn't happen. Oh, yeah. That's the um, the old um, 22. It's, it's, sorry, 22, 2000. It's, it is amazing that you can pick these detectors up uh, very cheaply now. I've, I've seen them sell between probably six, six to... Um, $600, $800 on the market. But uh, just a bit of modernising. You get it and uh, modernise it. And uh, in some cases with um, big coils, um, it has the possibility of going a lot deeper on um, larger gold than some of the modern detectors. Um, I Many, many years ago, I did some testing uh, with with these detectors just standard set to low frequency and I remember I did this up in um, the high country I did this at uh, Jamison where I had a whole heap of um, large um, coils I made 30 and 40 inch coils I put them on the ground and I had a wooden step ladder I stepped um, up the ladder in the middle of the where the coil was and I had various targets um, you know, Coke cans <laughs> was one. Um, divers sinkers, big, big lumps of lead, uh, all sorts of stuff. And on big targets, I'm talking about, say, a big piece of metal, half the size of a loaf of bread. I could actually get that with a 40 inch coil um, well above um, where I was on the ladder. With my hand up in the air, I could just move it across. So, if you want to dig very big holes with a big coil and one of these low frequency detectors, um, it, yeah, you never know what's down there. You know, the, the deeper the target, too, the less chance it has be has um, has of being junk. Um, you know, if you're getting something down, you know, say say you're looking down 1.2 meters or you know four feet, something like that. Um, you know. 
it's unlikely you're going to find, you know, um, old junk metal items. Not saying you can't because we have. We found old miners' implements down that far. Um, we found broken picks, um, the ends of shovels, all sorts of stuff, and it's been covered over. And but you know, in ground you know that uh, hasn't been uh, completely um, trashed, and you get a big low tone type signal inverted signal uh is every chance that if you dig it it might be something very good but you know this is this is good a lot of the guys um over in europe use uh the sd detectors uh and a lot of them use the sd 2200 uh set to low frequency and they use that to find the old tomb treasures you know the um the, the mounds that uh, disintegrated into the earth and that now the ground looks flat and they go looking for all the uh, treasure because it was a lot of those things are full of gold uh, and you know like um, jewelry pieces head pieces um, all sorts of stuff there's a bit of a market for that it's probably a black market but uh, you know they're all out there doing it but uh, for the gold market um, big big gold you know Something like like this set up here. Um, imagine, you know, if, you know, years ago, if, if um, you know, it was. I'm not going to say the welcome stranger because that was like four inches under the ground. But uh, you know, there's some of the nuggets around where I live here. Um, I think um, uh, there was one that was called the Viscount Canterbury or something. It's a bloody huge piece of gold. And if you have a look at uh, some of the records. Um, I think it was found at 14 feet, right? Somewhere around here. And, and it was big. This thing was big. I can't remember the uh, exact size of it, but you can probably look it up in the record books. But it was, it's, you know, these things are multi hundred ounce pieces of gold. And a big coil with one of these, uh, you know, 14 feet. God, that's pushing it. But maybe it, you could get it. Maybe you get a, a fringing signal and you go, oh, there's something there. You know, maybe you'd. You'd say, oh, bloody hell, I'm not digging that. But, you know, for a couple of million bucks of gold, um, yeah, I think many people have walked away from big targets saying, oh, I don't know, what's that ground noise? Uh, walk away. I know people have walked away and gone back and dug it and it was big gold. I've done it myself. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's where we are. So, yeah, if you've got um, any of the old detectors, you can convert them, you can modernize them, or you can, uh, if you want us to do it, we'll modernize it for you, make it make a nice detector, you know. Um, this one here has actually been um, converted to run off a uh, GPX battery. That's good. A, uh, down we go. Yeah, you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but that's a, a, G, a, a GPX battery connector there. And it's on the GPX battery sitting there. Well, it's one of our batteries we make. So it's, you know, made for the GPX. Puts out 8.4 volts. So this is this here at the moment, even though it's, um, I've got it uh, running fairly uh, low frequency. It's on the, it's on the two, no, it's on 1.8 megahertz. So we, we're going to lower that and those pulses there will, Get pretty close to double, but uh, yeah, I just got my um, you know, get it loosen it off. Might as well show you what I'm sticking my fingers on. Be careful of that one there. That one there's got 185 volts on it. It'll zap you if you touch ground or anything. Um, it'll it'll thump your arm so damn hard it'll give you a dead arm. So be careful of that thing there. All right, it is. You know, normally when it's there, it has a little bit of a shroud on. This one's been taken off because it was taken out the case. Just be careful. Uh, it is connected to this. There we go. To that capacitor there. And 180 microfarads. It's got close on 200 volts there. Don't touch it. DC is horrible. Bad enough AC, but I've picked this up. And, and I don't know if you can... You know, I'll just loosen this off. I might as well give you a bit of a safety lesson on this as well. <clears throat> Dear me. There's two resistors on the board there. That one and that one. They are meant to um, go across this capacitor and discharge it when you turn the detector off. 
and I think the I can't remember what they are, one K or ten K, I think one one K, one point five K, something a long time since I've looked. And they can go open circuit, you don't know. And I picked the bloody detector up underneath like this one day and I, I grabbed the capacitor, I grabbed the grabbed the uh um the uh FET here. You can, look, I'll tell you, like it's on at the moment, right? Normally, just don't do this because it is dangerous. But you know, I'm touching it; it's nothing, right? But if I make a return path, it'll bloody zap me. So just be careful when the detector's on, and you're anywhere near this end of the detector here, right? Um, it'll belt your beauty. Just be careful. Even uh, the uh, diodes. Whoops, there we are. These diodes here. They they um will have two hundred volts on those. They got fairly thick white paint, so they're not going to belt you. Well, the paint falls off, it will, right? Uh, just just be careful anywhere around here. You know, I'll show you. I'll just get the multimeter out. Right, we'll see how much volts is on this thing. So we got to get a DC. Put on five hundred volts. I'll put on the meter so you can see the meter. Where are you, meter? There you are. There you go. Bit, bit. Um. So where are we? We'll go. I'll go across this thing. Make sure I've got it in volts, not in the ohm setting. There you are. Can you see that? Now I'll put the back light on. There you go. 187 volts. That'll send you in the next week. All right? Don't touch. <laughs> All right? It says negative. Depends which way you put the um, multimeter probes. But anyways, be careful. Be careful. Playing around with any of, any of that stuff there. Just be careful of it, right? It will belt you. Um, but the same goes for all the modern detectors. There's no warning label. People pull them out, put them on their bench, turn it on, you know, even, um, yeah. Here's a GPX I'm doing up. Now, I better zoom this out a bit because it's, it's blowing up like crazy. Even this, same thing. This capacitor here, that'll have that voltage on that capacitor. This is your... Um, Your clamp, it, it's just a, a P channel MOSFET, and you know what it's meant to do is keep the voltage stable at around about whatever it is 185, say 100, 190 volts or something of that nature. Um, I've seen these transistors here go open circuit, and I've, I've seen 260 volts across the um, capacitor and you, you know 260 volt DC out of that if you picked it up and touched it um, you'll know about it you know this this stuff it's enough there to, to stop your heart if you grabbed it with two hands and it went across your chest you know it, it has that much impact just be careful with pulse induction detectors because they are dangerous especially if the safety mechanisms such as any of the um you know the um resistors here which are across the circuit which are meant to discharge the capacitors right don't do it they're open circuit not there that capacitor will hold charge at, at a high level um if it's open circuit what, what do you think um I've had them two to three days later, and I've been belted off them um, because I would have thought it was dead, and it hasn't been. So now I don't put my hands under the board. I don't touch the board like this. It will belt you if you touch the wrong thing. People don't realise, just be careful. You know, if you're going to pick it up, pick it up by the capacitor or something. Pick it up by the um, end bits here. Don't touch. Always. Um, Meter it, or to be 100% safe, short the capacitor out with a screwdriver. 
underneath the board across the contacts. Just bang it, zap it. Sometimes I have a, uh, a sacrificial pair of insulated things because they've got white paint on them and just go like cut onto the um, solder connections. Just go crackle, crackle, and it'll go bang and it'll be discharged. So just be careful. I know people play with this stuff, so just be careful. Okay. So that's a <clears throat> enough on this and uh, the noisy SD2000. I'll do another video. I'll see how quiet I get it. Okay. Um, we'll see how the performance is compared to uh, a modern day GPX or something. I reckon we can get pretty close. We'll see how we go. Anyway, that's enough of that. Catch us next time.